Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick from Part-Time Pilot. We're going to continue sort of our video series on VORs. And we're going to talk about tracking inbound and outbound on VORs. These are all sort of things I've said in the other videos. We talked about the general specifics of a VOR system and VOR instruments in your aircraft. We talked about how to read a VOR and determine your relative position using the to from indications and your needle indication. Then we talked about how to intercept a VOR radial. We also talked how to find your exact position using VOR, two VORs, or a VOR and a DME. And you can watch those videos uh, by clicking up in the playlist on the top right. And now I want to go in a little bit more detail in the tracking inbound and outbound and being able to kind of determine your position, how far away you are off your course using, again, your VOR instrument. And then kind of, again, discuss go into a little bit more detail about that and reverse sensing so that you can track inbound and outbound on your VORs. So let's get to it. So when using a VOR radio as you route a flight, it's important that you do not stray off course. So you want to keep that needle centered, the white needle centered, and if you deviate to the left or to the right, you'll want to be able to correct quickly and efficiently and not correct wrongly and go the opposite direction. So you want to be able to, to track on, on that VOR radio. When flying the same heading as the radial in your VOR, the needle will tell you what to do in order to get back on course. Again, this is what we've called direct sensing in my other videos. And this to me is the most simple way to do it. It's the way to avoid confusion. The other way is reverse sensing. So if you're not flying in the same heading, if you're flying something opposite or in the in a different direction, you might be have what we're call what we call reverse sensing. And that means if the needle is to the left, you actually have to turn right. And to me, that just makes things more confusing than it needs to be. So I always try and travel and dial in my VOR in the same direction that I'm traveling so that I have this direct sensing. So when you have direct sensing, a needle to the left means you need to turn left to get back on course. And a needle to, to the right means you need to turn right to get back on course. Pretty simple. The dots at the bottom of the needle, so again, we have our VOR instrument, and then we have a needle that goes center, and then we have these dashes or dots. And depending on where our needle, if our needle is off here or off here, these dashes are going to tell us how many degrees off course we are. So each dot or dash is two degrees. So this one would be, we'd be two degrees off to the left because the needle's to the right so we need to turn right and it, because we have to turn right that means we're to the left of our VOR our VOR radial and then this one over here is on the second dash so we, we're four degrees to the right of our radial again because this is to the left so it means we'd have to turn left so we're we're to the right we're four degrees to the right we'd have to turn left so these are degrees now how do we know how far off course we are like are we one mile from the vor radial are we two miles from the vor radial well you can use an equation using these these degrees to determine if you know the distance to your vor to determine the distance off course you are and that equation is the distance off equals the distance to a VOR times the sign of the degrees off. So these are the degrees off. And then let, let's uh, draw this a little bit better so that you can see what we're talking about here. Okay, so we have a VOR station here. And we have a radial here that we want to be on. But our aircraft, let's draw that in blue, our aircraft is over here. And we want to know, so we're actually on this lane. And let's say our needle is off to the left, so we need to turn left, right? We need to turn left to get back onto our radial. So our needle's off to the left, and let's say it's off to the left by four degrees. So that's what this four degrees, it's this angle here between our radial and our actual line here. So that four degrees, and then, so that's the degrees off in this equation right here. Now, the distance to the VOR is going to be this distance here 
to here. Now, if you don't know that, you can't use this equation. And to know that, it, the easiest way is if this station is a VOR DME or if it's a Vortec, because that gives you distance information. So if you had a VOR DME and it told you this distance here, let's call that D, all you have to know is that and then the, deg the degrees here. And so you have distance of the VOR, time sign of the degrees off. And then what that tells you is that tells you the distance from the VOR radial to your aircraft. This horizontal distance here, that's the distance you are off. So again, it's another way to sort of triangulate your position, this time using math and trigonometry. But again, you have to know this distance and then you have to know this angle. This angle you can find from your VOR instruments. You'll definitely have that. And then if this VOR is a VOR DME or Vortec, then you can get this distance information. So it's very possible that you can have all this information and you can write this in on your kneeboard or have it somewhere in your notes. All right, so let's do uh, just a couple examples. So we have three different scenarios here and we have a VOR reading for each one of them. So scenario one matches this over here. So in scenario one, we have the needle to the left on the fourth dot. So it's the fourth dot. So each dot is two degrees. So that means we're eight degrees off. So if we read over here, needle to the left means turn left to get back on course. So that means we're to the right. So that's this aircraft here. Here's our radial line here. So we're to the right because we know that because of the needle to the left. And we're off course by eight degrees. So if we knew this distance that we are from the VOR, which in this case I've written them down, so we do, it says eight nautical miles. So if we had a VOR DME and this was telling us we're eight nautical miles away from the VOR station, then we would just do eight times sine of eight degrees and we will get 1.1 nautical miles. That means we are this distance right here from here to here from the radial, we're 1.1 nautical miles. Now scenario two, right here, we have the needle is centered. And then since the needle is centered, there's no correction needed. And we know we are right on the line, so we don't need to compute a distance. And if we had a D VOR DME, it might tell us the distance we are. In this case, uh, it says 22, so that's the example. So we're 22 distance off, but we don't need to do any correction because our needle is centered. Scenario three, we have the needle to the right on the second dot. Again, each dot is two degrees, so the second dot means we're four degrees. Because the needle's to the right, we need to turn to the right to get back on course. So that puts our aircraft over here to the left of the radial. Again, this is our radial here. We're to the left. We know we're to the left because our needle is off to the right. Needle off to the right means we need to turn right to get back on course, so that means we're to the left. So how much are we off course? Well, if we have the VR DME distance information, which we have in this example as 12 nautical miles, we do 12 times the sine of the degrees we're off, which is four degrees. So 12 times sine of four degrees gives us 0.8 nautical miles. So this distance from where we are to the actual radial is 0.8 nautical miles. And then finally, if you're not flying the same heading as what is in your VOR, you'll be reverse sensing. And I've mentioned this multiple times, but just wanted to picture it and visualize it for you guys. And so in this case, a needle to the left wouldn't mean turn left, it would mean turn right. And a needle to the right would mean, it would not mean turn right, it would mean turn left. So in this situation, in this example right here, as you can see, we have a 330 indication. So this is our, this is our radial right here. Our needle is to the left. Because we're not pointed at 330, we're actually pointed in the opposite direction we're going to be reverse sensing. So this needle to the left actually doesn't mean we need to turn to the left because if we turn to the left, we would go over here. And that it does not get, get us back on course. So we actually have to do the opposite. We have to turn to the right to get us back on course and be flying on the radial we want to be on. All right, so hopefully that has been a little bit more helpful and tell you a little bit more about the details of your VOR instrumentation how reverse sensing works, and how to use those course deviation indicator notches to determine exactly how far away you are from where you want to be.